common enemy intimacy. Can I speak to you about common enemy intimacy? I read this term uh, in a book by Brene Brown some years ago, and she spoke about um, when our closeness, you and I, um, when our intimacy, our friendship, our relationship is based on the hatred, the despising, the dislike of a common enemy you and I have, that that bond that we have is, is artificial and fake and forced because it is founded on a common hatred that we have rather than founded on a sense of common humanity that we both share, which will give more longevity and stronger authentic glue <clears throat> to our relationship. Around the world, um, more than ever, people are forming common enemy friendships, common enemy alliances. And when our alliances and our relationships and friendships are forged through someone, something we both hate and despise, it is fueled by our continued hatred. It is fueled by our continued dislike um, and upset and offense about that person or that organization or that situation that we both have found each other over. It's the easiest thing in the world. It's far easier to bond with someone over someone you hate than someone or something you love. You bump into a stranger somewhere on, you know, traveling on a plane and, oh, you hate that too. Yeah, I did that. I hated that too. Oh, I hate that, don't you? And the things that we commonly dislike and hate are much easier to form a connection over often than the things that we have chosen carefully to love and invested life into. Because there's very little commitment of you and I in what we hate. Because hate doesn't require you to think it through. Hate is this visceral, emotional feeling that you have and it's imprinted on your soul. <clears throat> and it tends to trade in reaction and being instinctive. So hate pours out often and dislike and offense often pours out of us because it lives near to the surface in us humans as our more embedded loves and joys do. But I promise you that whatever your life is built on common enemy intimacy, it is a fake bond amongst us as humans. It is a troublesome one too. It is one that um, needs to be aware of and examined and removed from our network of relationships, personally or corporately. I wonder if you could uh, think today about where you have uh, a relationship, a friendship based on nothing more than a common hate, a common dislike, a common offense that you have taken to the same person, church, organization, situation. Um, I wonder if today that's already landed on your phone again, or you've already pressed send again to your common enemy friend. Um, and I want to ask you, what good is that doing for you? What value does that add to your life? And the truth is, um, it has zero value to your life. So would you check out, would you beware, would you have a radar for, whether it's you or someone around you that's trying to include and evolve you in it? their common um, enemy intimacy that they want you to become a new group member of. Beware of that. Don't get involved in other people's um, common enemy sharing with you so that you join them and it becomes a larger group. And many of these common enemy groups that are bonding are huge around the world. And I think it is, I think it is a blow to our healthy humanity I think it's a blow to our healthy human bonds when we allow it to default to common enemy intimacy. Just watch for that in your life and in other people's lives around you that push that agenda towards you. I think it's hugely damaging and divisive to our, to our humanity 
um, now and in the future. It will get worse, not better, if we don't pull this off autopilot and be more intentional about our connections and our joinings with other humans in our lives.